recording. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Carrie Fisher. I work at Longsight, and I'm here with Brian Holiday. Uh, the presentation today is called The New Peer Assessment Feature and Assignments. Um, this session is being recorded, so after the presentation, we'll be able to, to show the video and, and have access to it as needed. Um, for this session, all attendees are going to be muted. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you have any problems getting into um, uh, listening to this presentation or of any other support questions, just type in the chat box and then that way we can uh, address those questions. Additionally, if you have any questions about what is being presented, um, type it in the chat box as well. Um, Brian, are you planning to do a question and answer at the end or do you want questions throughout? Uh, it doesn't really matter. If we have time, we can devote some time at the end. Okay. Well, we'll do that. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Brian, and then you he can take it all over and uh, show the presentation. Great. So Thanks. Brian Holiday is a senior developer at Longsight um, since 2010. He's got a master's and a BS in computer science. He was introduced to Sakai in 2007 when he started working for a new position at Indiana University. Uh, he quickly fell in love with a large international Sakai cohort and enjoyed seeing his work benefit people beyond his institution. Uh, top Sakai accomplishments while working for Longsight is creator of the Delegated Access Tool, Tutorial Tool, Syllabus Redesign, Assessments Peer Review, Entity Link Migration, Joinable Groups, and Forum Grading by Statistics. So quite a lot here. Um, he has also performed Sakai community work as a 2.8 branch manager and the project lead for messages and forums. And not in his bio, but additionally he has been uh, primary lead on the plagiarism tool that was recently introduced. So he's he's a busy guy. Huh. Indeed. Oh, thank you, Gary. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, first things first, uh, I added a link in the chat. So uh, if anyone who wants to participate in this live demo, uh, click that link and join the site. And essentially, I'm just going to try to, uh, you know, just kind of go through the peer assessment uh, features uh, as a group. Uh, you'll be the students, I'll be the instructor, and uh, I'll explain all the settings and all the situations that we're going to go through. So uh, it looks like the majority of people have already done that, so I'll go ahead and just get started. And if, if you need to, you can just uh, join the site while I'm talking. All right, so everybody's hopefully familiar with the assignments tool in Sakai. And so peer review is for the uh, assignments one. And um, essentially what it does is it allows the students to add comments and uh, a score for uh, a number of uh, peers that they, uh, that they have access to grade, essentially. And then once that uh, process is finished, the instructor has the final say and releases the grades back to the students. Um, so like I said, we'll just jump through the whole thing. Um, that's the best way to explain it. Um, so I'm the instructor, and I'm just going to go ahead and add an assignment. Uh, name it just peer review assignment. I'm going to open it up as of yesterday. That way everyone can go ahead and submit. Um, for peer review, it's important that the um, that there are points. It's actually required. Uh, this is a way for students to um, give feedback as well as instructions, um, as, as well as um, text. All right, so adding some instructions. Scroll down. <clears throat> You'll see this peer review section here. Um, it's just a toggle checkbox. So if you want to use peer review, you select the checkbox. So the way peer review works in assignments is first, it's based on these open dates, due dates, accept date, and then a final date called evaluation period. Uh, well, I guess it's not called evaluation period finishes. Um, it's, it's the time that the chance that the, um, that the student has to uh, submit their evaluation. So whenever that time is up, they cannot submit it anymore. 
Um, so the way it works is open date, between the open date and the accept until date, a student can submit for the assignment. Uh, but once the acceptance until date is finished, um, they, the, the next phase of the assignment is the peer review phase. So between this date, 11 14, 2014 at 5 p.m. to the evaluation period, which by default is just 10 minutes more, which is definitely not enough time, um, but it can't be before the accept until date. So I'll just, uh, right now this doesn't matter since I'm gonna be changing these dates, but you wanna give the students appropriate amount of time uh, to review, so maybe a day or two. I don't, I'm not 100% positive, just in your use case that you need. Uh, so, anonymous evaluation <clears throat> by default, this is selected. What this means is when a student goes to evaluate another student, it just says student one, it doesn't say their name. Um, so, if you want other students to see the names of the students, make sure uh, that anonymous evaluation is unselected. Um, and I believe that works also with the um, students who can view submissions or view the evaluations. Uh, so this next checkbox here is, do you want the students to be able to view their reviews for their submissions? So another student reviewed them, do you want that student to be able to see that? And I believe anonymous We'll, we'll know for sure at the end of this presentation, but um, anonymous evaluation keeps that anonymous, but if it's not, then they can actually see who reviewed them. <clears throat> All right, so then the next uh, setting here is a number of submissions a student must review. So each student has to submit a paper to participate in the review. So if you don't submit the paper, you're considered just not part of the assignment. Uh, and then from there, each student will be assigned a number of reviews to review uh, for students. So in this case, it's default to one, so it's just one to one. Uh, but you can put as many as you want. Um, the the tool will uh, randomly select uh, uh, students for other students to review until they hit the number. Um, it's just kind of a round robin kind of thing. So once once the number of submissions is you know uh, has been taken <clears throat> that okay so student okay so once the number of submissions are taken uh, the reviews themselves just you know you can have an odd number of reviews uh, so one could have to review four and another person has to only review three uh, that's because each each assignment is supposed to have this number so if you submit an assignment you should get at you know this number of reviews so it's just, just kind of the way the math works out. Some people can have an odd number of reviews that they have to submit. Um, so instructions, obviously this is what the, uh, the students that are submitting will see before when for the review. So whenever they're in, um, in the review page for a, an assignment of their, one of their peers, they'll see this, uh, these instructions. So I'll go ahead and you should do a good job reviewing. All right, so those are my instructions, and we'll save this. Okay, so I've opened this assignment. So this is a participation page part of the session. So if everyone, I'll show you, I'll actually display as a student in this uh, window and you can just go along with me. Uh, if you refresh your assignments tool as a student, you'll see uh, <clears throat> you got two lists here, even though there's only one assignment. So if you, on top here is the actual assignment, they can click that. This is a title, it, it's not an auto title, it's the one that I put in for the assignment. Um, so the status, I, I haven't started as a student. Um, it's already open and I know it's gonna finish on the 14th. But this next one tells me that this is a peer review assessment. So this tells me I have another assignment, basically. It's a peer assessment of this assignment. Um, but it tells me I can't start until I've submitted to the assignment. It also gives me the open and close date for the peer review. So what this is, is the accept until date right here. And then this is the evaluation period ends at date. So as a student, I wish, you know, if everybody wants to participate, 
uh, the more the merrier. So go ahead and submit either um, inline text or an attachment or both. Um, so the permissions will allow you know your peer review your reviewers to actually view your um, attachments and everything. So. I'm just going to do text and submit. So I get my confirmation. So now you see that there is a new uh, status, basically. My status for the assignment has been submitted. Um, the dates are the same. Uh, my peer event assessment status has now changed from needing to submit to not open. Um, so this just tells me as a student that you know I need to wait until this date uh, before I can start the peer assessment. Hey, Brian, mm -hmm. that was an interject real quick, too, is if anyone who joined late, I saw a few people did, if you guys have any questions um, while the presentation is going on, feel free to add it in the chat box or in the questions area mm -hmm. on the uh, toolbar here. All right, so we have 10 submissions so far. I will wait. A little bit longer, but not too much more. Um, all right, 13. So, so the next step, I'm going to kind of, um, you know, fake the situation where you know the, the due date, you know, is over and accept until date's over, and the peer assessment review starts. So I'm going to adjust my dates um, to an earlier dates. So now. I'm setting it so the accept until date is completed. So, you know, the assignment is over. Um, the points are still the same. I'm actually going to raise this number to three just so you can see the number of uh, reviews that are required. It's just a little nicer to have more uh, than just one. Um, so, this date I'm going to keep the same. So, right now that means we're between the accept until date and we are. You know, after that date, but before this date. So we're in the review period. So I'm going to post this. It's going to warn me that I can't adjust it in the past, but I can. So I'm going to do it twice. And then, uh, so what's going on behind the scenes is there's actually a little bit of a delay. Um, there's a uh, there's a job basically. If you're familiar with um, the course jobs in Sakai that uh, is, is triggered on that. Um, so if I have a, you know, a, a date of, you know, in an hour, it'll open. Yeah. In one hour, the course job would run and open up the peer assessment. So it's not, it's not open exactly on the time. Um, it, there's a window of, uh, well, the new default is two minutes. The old default, default is five minutes, um, or maybe even 10, if I, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but when Sakai 10, uh, it's two minute window. So within two minutes, we should get um, get uh, the peer assessment open. And actually, I think I adjusted it to one minute for this presentation. So um, as a student, I'm going to try to refresh. And here we go. So it's already opened. <clears throat> so this is the next phase. This is the peer assessment. Uh, Phase, I guess. Uh, so what we're seeing here as a student, I still have my assignment on top. I submitted. I know the due date. Obviously, it's complete. Um, now I have this peer assessment. Um, my status is not. I haven't started. It still gives me the dates. But I also get these three links here. Um, these are anonymous, so you just see student one, student two, student three. So I can click this link, and what it'll do is it gives me the instructions of the assignment. So I, you know, just like the instructor interface. Um, I can hide them. <clears throat> this gives me the instructions for the reviewer. Um, assignment submission is empty on this one. So I'm not sure who this is. I'll, I'll give you a grade of zero and nothing here. So I can either save or submit it. And I can also do this return to list and click next. Um, every action will actually save except for cancel. Um, so this will just save it. Submit will save and submit it. Uh, return list will save it. Re next will return. We'll save it. Um, so let's just show you save real quick. And I can go back to the list. 
and I'll see that the status has changed to draft in progress. Um, so I can go back to this next student, and I, here's actual submissions. Um, sign the submission. There's no student submitted text, but I do see a turn it in 100 document. So I can look at this, um, see what goes on here, and I can see that. I can access that as a student, and I can then you know follow the rubric or whatever instructions there are. I'll give you a five because I think that was good. Uh, post my comments. I can save, and this time I'm actually going to submit it. So. As you can see, as soon as I submit it, it takes me to the next one. So this is now the next student, which is just plain here is my submission um, versus no attachments. That's, you know, not really that well. So I'm going to go ahead, do better. I'm going to submit that one as well. So since I submitted, it took me to the final one that I haven't submitted. I'm just going to leave that in draft for now. But as you can see, when I submit it, its status is submitted. I can't update it anymore in student. So, um, but I can still work on the first one. So hopefully everybody's doing that on their side. Uh, go ahead and do it so if you have not. And I will go back to the instructor view. And I'll show you, it's not required to submit. Um, really, it's just a flag for the student to know whether they're done or not. It's, it's really for them. Um, draft is just as good as a submission in, um, from the instructor's side perspective. So what that means is as soon as a peer review session is complete, this is as good as submitted. Um, so they're not going to lose that. Uh, it's just more or less a reminder that they didn't feel like they were done yet. So I'm going to go back to the instructor and show you another feature. So I'm going to the grading section as the instructor. And you can see this warning here. Um, <clears throat> the instructor's grading ability has been disabled until the peer review is complete. So you can see there's no grade links. I can't go and grade the any, of, any of this. Um, that's because the peer review session is open and we don't want to, um, to interfere with that. So it looks like a lot of people are doing their peer reviews. And as the instructor, I'll explain this UI. So you have, the student submission, you have the student there, the date they submitted, the status is graded, and you can actually see the three reviewers that have been assigned to the student. Uh, the checkbox obviously means they're completed. Uh, draft means they left it in draft. Um, and then you can actually see the score that they gave them. And as you can see, the final grade for the student has been um, the average of the two scores, or all three scores. You know, It just depends on how many scores there are. Uh, but that's where the average comes from. Um, and then release, nothing has been released because I'm the instructor and I'm the one that does that. So the good thing, the thing about the instructor is I can actually go in. Um, I'll probably just wait until after the review is over. So let's go ahead and close the review session. So the way I want to close it is the same way as I opened it. Um, the fourth is the accept until date. And so I'm just going to make this closed as of today. And so now the evaluation period has been turned off as soon as it gives me that warning and I click save again. And so now I go back to grade and you can see I can actually grade now. Um, and I can see the exact same things. I don't have the warning anymore. Um, it's the exact same UI. So what I can do, what I'll do here is actually show you. I want to well, let's go to the student first. So the student, let's see what they look like. So I, uh, I didn't submit all three of mine, so it shows the status of incomplete. Um, like I said, it doesn't, from the instructor view, all it does is just let them know that they didn't, you know, submit it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's still been submitted. Uh, if it was, if I did all three and I submitted all three, it would say complete. Um, but this is basically what they see for now. And I bet I could actually, oh, I haven't released it yet. So, okay. So let me go back to the instructor view. <clears throat> and I can actually, let's just look at these first three here. Um, I'll go ahead and click this review. And I can see that the student 
see, or this reviewer gave a score of two and said not that bad. Um, and I can click next and view the next one. And this way, it just follows this list. Uh, next and previous, it just follows this list right here. Um, that way you don't have to keep on going back and forth. Um, save you some time. But let's just go ahead and remove this review. So the instructor has this additional option to remove the review. I'm going to go back to return a list. And you'll see that this has been crossed through. So the 2.0 has been crossed through. Um, I didn't agree with this as the instructor. And you can see also the grade has been updated. Um, so this 3.7 instead of, uh, I don't know what it was before. Uh, so I'm actually, uh, you know, I can adjust this way. Uh, and actually, as an instructor, I can think, well, maybe I don't agree with any of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do my own grade and give you a five in my I'll save and go back to the list. And you'll see that, you know, the instructor's grade is the one that's being shown there. So, um, but, you know, if you do make adjustments, so if I do remove one of these or something, it might actually um, adjust that. So let's check that real quick. So you have to be weary, you know, weary for that situation. Nope. So it, it, it takes the instructor's grade, even though, I made adjustments to the review. It still kept the instructor grade, which is what you want. Um, I actually remember working on that now as a feature. Uh, but essentially, you know, it's an override. The instructor can it has the final say. Um, so let's go back to this one, the 3.7, and I can actually click this, and you can restore it. So when I click restore and go back to the list, since I didn't override the grade completely, it'll just actually recalculate the grade based on these three. Um, and it's no longer marked out. So I'm going to agree with everybody and say that everybody probably did a good job and I'm going to release all the grades. So just, you know, just like normal assignment, the instructor has the final say. All the grades have been released. So I'm going to go back as the student. I'm going to refresh. Um, it's been returned. I guess I did it late, but that's because I've been messing with the times. Um, and I can click this, and this is actually an old UI. Uh, we must have not updated Trisakai assignments tool for since the last one, but um, this uh, this UI is a little different. So shows your uh, this is this is Brian's submission. So this is what I submitted as a student, and then it shows my three uh, reviews here and their scores and um, the comments, and it says. You know, and it has my total score up here on top. So let's let me show you. Um, I wish I, eh, I I'm not going to try to find it, but the new UI this was uh, a little plain looking. So if you're familiar with um, the accordion feature for uh, jQuery, and it's actually the, how the new syllabus tool looks like. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, that's kind of what it looks like now. So it's just an accordion where, you know, it says reviewer one is the header and you click it and it shows you the score in the comments. Um, so it's just a little, a little cleaner looking than this. Uh, and I, I'm not hundred percent sure if it's in 10 or if it's going to be in 11. Um, but peer review itself is in 10. Uh, so that's, that's it. I mean, that's going through every single phase. I'm hoping Let's see what the comments are saying. No comments. So hopefully everybody didn't, you know, everybody had a good experience and didn't have any errors or, you know, expectations that weren't fulfilled, I guess. Um, and uh, so please, you know, all questions, any comments, um, et cetera, please add them to the chat and we'll, and I'll address them. Yeah, it's been kind of quiet this morning. I'm guessing um, the coffee just hasn't kicked in for maybe, most Maybe they don't have access to the chat. <laughs> um, well, that I would be, uh, be an issue um, for sure. Um, Somebody please type in the chat. Just say hi. For test. Yeah. Must not be able to chat. I'll check with Wilma on that real quick. I while we have a lot of question marks here. up here. Um, are there any other things you want to demo quick while we have a few extra minutes? Yeah, 
Maybe I'll unmute. All right, Amy Train, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you chat in the can you type in the chat box or has that been disabled? I don't see anything in the chat box. Yeah, we don't see anything in the chat. Did that go through? Amy, sorry. I'm talking to Amy. I actually unmuted you. You're the only one. <laughs> yeah, I can pick somebody else if you want. I just, I'm just trying to find out whether people can chat. I'm thinking they cannot. All right. We'll just assume people cannot. Um, there's a forums tool, so I'm going to actually going to show you. This is the Sakai virtual conference. If you go to the forums tool, and under the new peer review assessment feature and assignments, just go ahead and post your questions there, and I'll answer those. Uh, and we'll just do it that way. So I'm not sure what's going on with the chat message. So. Um, other than that, I don't think we want to wait around and listen for people uh, trying to trying to yeah, post questions. It sounds like, so. Yeah, Peter from Longsight is trying to um, ask a question, but it's not showing up for me as a presenter. Can you look under the, the questions box, Brian, and see if maybe you can see it? Where's the questions box? Um, it's above the chat one, the, the other blue one with the carrot. Hey, there are questions. Oh, okay, so I can't see that as a moderator, so it must be a permissions issue for me. So, right. sorry, Brian, I'm not much help for you for that. Okay, I don't see site tab, so I can't submit. Can't find. I'm supposed to submit to. Here, I'm just going to go from the bottom up because I have a question. Can we use peer review functionality with group assignments? Uh, the answer to that is no. It's been disabled. Um, it might be. It, it's just a lot more technical. Um, technically involved, so as a first phase, it's just was ignored. Um, all right, do we have to have assignments one? Do we need to have assignments one updated? Uh, yes, if you're not running Sakai 10, then it's uh, it's been released as in 10.0. Uh, so assignments one, 10.0. Bob Long, does this work? No, I don't think it does. Uh, Amy, no, let's see. Thank you again. Any other questions? Brian? Yep. Brian, can you, when you answer the questions, can you just reread them? It seems like um, going through them a little quickly there. All right. Oh, yeah, I was just reading. There's a lot of uh, not really question questions. Uh, sure. And, let's see, here's and one. Peter, when Peter is saying not... that um, they don't have chat access, just question access. Okay. So, so if anyone has student... any questions. Oh, sorry, Perry. No, I was just letting everyone know again, if any of you have any questions, don't put it in the chat box because apparently you don't have that. So yeah. use the questions box, please. So there's a question here. When student does not submit an assignment, what happens with them in terms of peer review? Uh, as I mentioned, they just don't get the peer review. Uh, they don't submit, so they don't get anything assigned to them. Um, so they just they don't they didn't participate in the assignment, so they don't participate in the peer review. All right, let's see. Everything we can't chat on. Mm -hmm. Will there be any? Will there be the ability to attach docs as a reviewer? Uh, I don't know. You know, that's something that could possibly be done, but right now it's just text and the score. Okay. Sorry, here. Very cool. All right, any other questions? Uh, did you say we can't use peer review with Turnitin? Uh, I didn't say that. You can. Uh, and it works for any content review service. Uh, so the instructor just you know, the, the student doesn't, the reviewer doesn't get access to those reports, but the instructor will still have access to them. Um, so it'll just be in the grading tool, or the grading section, it'll just be that additional column where they can click the link and see the um, 
the, the report. All right. Any other questions? Let's see. I got another one. Thanks. Thank you. Um, is it only? Yeah, assignment one only. Um, assignment two is not core. <laughs> so yeah, uh, will the peer assessment feature also work with Verisite? Answers yes. Any any content review service for Sakai, which there's only two, um, turn it in in Verisite. All right. Can you have multiple peer assessments per site? Per site, yeah, it's it's um one for uh, assignment. So you can have all your assignments to be peer reviews if you wish. Since we it looks like we have about fifteen minutes left of our session, is there any are there any other demos or anything people want to see while we have Brian on the line? Um, Risky. Not, not to put them on the spot or anything, but if you, if you have a little bit of extra time or any additional questions on, on this topic here. Great. Well, I think questions have dried up and topics have, uh, have gone, gone away. So, oh, another question. Any possibility of giving points? For reviewers, uh, you know, that's, you know, the, the instructor has the ability to see, obviously, which reviewer said with what and, um, and what, you know, their status is, whether they submitted a uh, draft or not. Um, but beyond that, you know, that's, it's, it's basically, you know, no UI to make that cleaner to be able to give a score uh, or a grade for the reviewer. Um, obviously, you know, the reviewer has submitted an assignment. So as part of their assignment grade, you can, you know, include their participation. But, um, you know, as of right now, the UI is not that great for uh, grading a reviewer. Brian, I was asked a question. Um, is there a way to do a peer review and Verisite on the same. Yes, um, yeah, content review. Um, so turn it in Verisite. Uh, they, the reviewers do not have access so, to those reports. Is that something that would be beneficial to demo? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything set up for that. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, not sure if I missed this, but can you see? Okay, so not sure if I missed this, but can you assign who reviews who, um, or is it random? Uh, it's random. And uh, so essentially, you know, if, if it wasn't random, you would have people that wouldn't have reviewers, and, you know, you'd have an odd number of reviewers per assignment. And so that's what the randomness is for. You want, you want to make it as evenly distributed as possible. And that, you know, that spans across groups as well. So if you, um, you know, if you have multiple, if you have, you can, you can, you can release an assignment to a selected number of groups and not be group assignments. And then, um, you know, so those reviews will actually cross through the groups if you have multiple groups for that one assignment, which is probably not a, you know, a, a normal use case, um, you know, you just do like one assignment per group or something. But you know, technically, it would go across all groups if you did that. Okay, last call for any questions. Um, this is also a reminder: there's a keynote address at ten o'clock. Um, so make sure that you sign in for that one. If you have any problems with technical questions or signing in or finding the right session, you can always write to support at longsite.com um, with any immediate issues. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Right. If there's no further questions, we'll just end the session. And thank you, Brian, for presenting. Um, again, if you have any follow-up questions about this session, um, you can post it 
um, in the discussion forum um, or write again to support at longsite.com. Do I have to do anything to stop the recording? Just click stop. Yep, just click Thank stop. You. Thank you, everyone.